Sanju Patel is the CEO of the Montford Group here in Charleston. In this edition of Quintin's Close-Ups, I sit down with Sanju one-on-one. -on -one. And be sure to download the free Quintin's Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. And listen to this interview later on iHeartRadio. Sanju Patel, it's so good to meet you. Pleasure, buddy, pleasure. Thank you for having me. Oh, anytime. I understand that you obviously are the CEO of the Montford Group. Correct, Montford Group, yes. And you live here in Charleston. I have been here since 99. Wow. What is the biggest difference between 1999 and right now when you think, when you think of Charleston in your mind? Um, you know, we're no longer a town. We're, we're becoming a city. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. As, as it provides a lot of opportunities for, you know, like younger generation. And, and that's pretty much what I like. I, I remember back in college when people graduated, they left the state or the city. Okay. Now it's the other way around. We have, we have so many opportunities here. And I think it should, it should be, the platform should be the same for everyone, right? So everybody should be able to enjoy the history, the culture, the ocean, and, 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 and the growth. Yeah, and I know that you had some developing news last week, and this is really an article from the Post and Courier. It says this, the plan is for a 105 room hotel aimed at visitors who are looking for a place in Charleston that, that's not so expensive. When you think of hotels in Charleston, what, where does your mind go? Well, as you know, we're, we're hotel developers, and um, you know, I've, I've been studying downtown market for a while. We own quite a few many properties now. Fortunately, we're blessed. Uh, and, you know, last week uh, was just a first step. We're very fortunate. Planning Commission approved uh, 547 and 810 both for hospitality overlay. Um, we go in front of council um, on, on the 20th and hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll believe what we're doing, the areas that we're going into. Um, and you know, our, our hotels in Charleston pretty much are, I feel like, only for a certain clientele. So if you can pay $400 a night, $300 a night, or, or $700 a night with Bennett House opening or, or the low enterprise going up, you know, all the revenue goes to Mount Pleasant or North Charleston, right? When city of Charleston can use more tax dollars because cause the city is growing at insane pace and, and the city staff needs to keep up. Uh, landscaping needs to be kept up, um, you know, police. I mean, just about everything, right? So we started thinking and started going in areas that when you travel, right, how much stuff do you take? Not <laughs> much. Right? I mean, if you ask a lot of people, I'm one of the spoiled travelers that get a big room. Oh. However... I end up using the most amount of space I need is a bathroom right. and my bed. Right. You know, I don't use a living room. Right. I don't use if there's a kitchen. Right. I don't use that. So, and and I realize that why have unnecessary space, right? When you can cut down um, and use that space for social settings. I, I feel like in in today's day and age, we're becoming more of a you know, wired people without being uh, connected. It's, it's so sad that, you know, as, as I think this has been used many times, we have 5,000 friends on Facebook, but we know two of them. Right. You know, <laughs> and, and so we, our products, our Monfort Group's goal is to bring in more social settings within our establishment, within our hotels. So a lot of F&B, a lot of a lot of places where people, even the locals, it's catered mainly towards locals, right? That that they can go and, and have a cup of coffee, work there all day, have their meetings all day without having to pay a membership at somewhere else or, you know, just, just make it their everyday place, which is not too stuffy. So if you have your shorts on, you know, you can go and hang out while, while a guy in a suit is having a scotch. And, and that's pretty much what we're planning to do at 547. If we get the support from the city staff and the neighborhood and, and whatnot. You talk about that neighborhood. I have to talk to you about Upper Meeting Street. What do you envision about the future of that particular area? 
Well, as you know, we own 510 Meeting Street, uh, 525 Meeting Street, and 547. So we, it's it was that block that was always neglected. And one of the reasons that I keep hearing from a lot of developers and, and even investors is because of the 180 place, mm -hmm. right? And the Section 8 housing across the street. Well, I look at it as as a bridge between what's happening south of Broad in the historic district, um, you know, like upper, the entertainment district, uh, so I called, and then upper, upper peninsula, Morrison Drive, wow. right? So I, I look at it as an opportunity to bridge our city that, that has a continuous growth rather than saying we're driving down Meeting Street and there's this block that's been neglected for I don't know how many years, right? So we're, look, we're in 180 place or Section 8 housing and, and all that. We don't see that as a, as a threat, right? We see that as part of being in, in the urban settings. So when you're in urban settings, you're going to have a combination because, in fact, we see it as a, as a positive thing that we can possibly provide employment for those people. Right, they can walk to our, our hotels or restaurants or so it's a positive thing for us. And you and the Postal Corey also said this too, and you touched on it just a few minutes ago also. You said that they said this quote, he envisions a property that touts technology rather than luxury for around two hundred dollars a night. What else do you envision with this property? Well it's very simple, right? I mean, um, how many people are becoming so awkward dealing with people? Right, like if you if, if I can talk to you all day long on a text or messenger, right? But when I see you, I I really have no idea what to do. Mm -hmm. So and I think it's gonna continue that way because people we're becoming slaves to technology. Let's be very honest, right? Like everything we do is based around technology. It's sure. even the big companies. Right. So it's very simple. Airline industry has been doing it. And we're, we're kind of following the trend, right? Where if you don't need to see an attendant, if you don't have a check-in bag, you check in online, you have your uh, boarding pass and you just walk straight to the security. So it's pretty much the same concept where you will be able to check in online. You don't really have to see anyone if you don't want to. However, we forces you through the ambience, right? Through the social settings we'll have, uh, through the hallways and elevators that will have an experience, right? So it'll force you to come out of the room mm -hmm. and go enjoy that beverage at, at check-in or, or, you know, go meet with 10 other people you may not know but have similar, um, you know, similar mindset about life and experiences and whatnot. And let me get back to the Mon Monfort group that is at Charleston. What is the future of this particular company in your mind? Well, we're just getting started. We're, we're, we started this company last year with Jessica Reed, who's my COO. Um, and now our team is of seven people. We have Jay Patel, Lily, Karen, Courtney, um, Nico. We're very fortunate that the pace that we're growing at half the company don't even have that in their business model, right? In, in less than a year, we acquired six properties and and we're constantly growing we're a small boutique company self-funded so far uh, we're looking to change that model okay. to bring in investors um, in the future just so that we can we can scale at a at a much faster level i've been in hospitality for for as long as i can remember and and that's all i do so you know the future we we want to take one step at a time but we've laid a foundation for next 10 years, right? We've got a lot of things in the pipeline. Um, you know, as they say, your team is, is what you're worth. And, and I mean, my, my team is insane. Uh, Jessica Reed, who's, who's my partner, who I started this company with, she's probably one of the most hardest working person I know who has an attitude of not giving up no matter what. Like I'm the hardest person to work with because okay. I'm one of those guys who's very detail oriented. I don't care about what goes in the making. If the end product is not good, it's not good. You know, so it's hard to work with me. Um, but Jessica Reed and now Jay kind of gets that touch. They understand what it takes because at the end of the day, Quentin, I don't know if you know about this, uh, about me, but I 
When I came to America in 99, I, I was living on Dorchester Road um, at my uncle's motel. So I lived in a motel room with him while he was there as well. I worked for him uh, as a night audit and then, and then also worked several jobs waiting tables at, at the Indian restaurant that was there on, on King Street. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. And then I worked across the street uh, at J. Crew. Heidi, my manager, I just ran into her not too long ago and I was like, wow. So, you know, I, I am one of those guys who used to fill up gas for $3 and, and get change out and, and now I'm on South Battery. You know, that, that whole transition has been truly a blessing for me. And my goal is not only to take this company to the next level, but also to, to figure out a way to, you know, be a motivational guy for for many of the guys in my shoe who are willing to work hard, who are you know committed, who are passionate, and who, who are honest to their work. So, but as they say, you gotta fill your stomach first before you can feed others. So that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're trying to set our foundation so strong that we can create a platform to give back. Mm. I know you want to probably be biased about this, and I gotta ask this silly question. But what is your favorite hotel and restaurant here in Charleston? You know, restaurant, hands down, halls. Yes. Um, I, I learn a lot from them in terms of business. I, I have never seen a family so committed, so hardworking, so passionate every single day. You know, it doesn't matter if it's raining, it's, it, it's sun is, you know, pouring down on us like at 110 degrees. Right. It doesn't matter the challenges of employment and hospitality. They are on their A plus game every single day. I'm a regular there. Yes. So I learned a lot from them, right? That no matter what, the end user doesn't care whether you're going through personal issues, whether you're going through financial issues, whether you're you're going through anything. You know, they care for the experiences. As long as you can provide them that, I think people will come, right? And so yeah, hands down, my favorite, I mean, in the world, I would say, when it comes to service, there's no better restaurant than Halls. Yeah. And, and they've added, they've become a staple in the city um, for, for people like us, right? Um, hotel, you know, I'm looking forward to Bennett House. I, I think, as you know, Mikey Bennett is the pioneer of hospitality. He is, he's one man who started from selling, renting scooters here on Market Street to owning what he does today. You know, I look up to him a lot. He, he's, a, he's a very smart, shrewd businessman, homegrown, um, which is something we all should take pride in. Uh, he's doing a lot of work right now in our city. And he adds to our culture, our architecture. He doesn't cut corners. Um, so I look up to Mikey Bennett a lot in terms of hospitality. And I think Bennett House is something that I'm looking forward to as a hotel. I like Dewberry on, on what he's done. I wish the F&B was a little different. Uh, I wish their rooftop was open because he's probably going to have the best rooftop in the city. Even though we're proposing rooftops at our hotels. But they're very different clientele uh, than what Dewberry would have. So, yeah, I think those two hotels, uh, I, I do like what they've done to it. Mm, that's so great to hear. Well, Sanju Batal, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. Thank you so much, buddy. I'm glad you, you invited me, and I, you know, I hope to see you around more often doing this amazing thing you do. Oh, yes. Did a great sky. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah.